machine that's running here is our G1 kit. In August of 2014, I produced about five videos of this machine. The first one was an introduction video, and the next uh, four were demonstration videos that showed input, output, uh, and also it showed uh, an unusual little recharging ability. And I had always just considered that a side effect. It was no big deal. Um, some people even thought it was a hoax. They just didn't understand how it was possible that it could do what it was doing. But over the years, uh, this will be the third time that I've shown this, this aspect uh, on the internet or, or on YouTube. Now, I don't think anyone else has ever shown this. And if they have and you've seen a video of it, please send me a link love to see it. So what I've done here is uh, I've isolated this section right in here which is basically everything on the left side of the flywheel and I put it into a separate cabinet so I can show you this process one more time and maybe the last time I show it I don't know but just pay close attention if you're interested in this and we'll go through it. Now uh, here's the machine that I isolated it into and you can see I'll just leave this kind of show in, in the background there because it's just the three phase that we're interested in. Now this machine is a little bit different because it's just of course it has the three phase here but it's going to be run by a motor and the motor will just represent the rest of the G1 as far as the four rotors and coils and magnets and things that make it uh, uh, rotate so we're just going to use this and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just identify the parts that's in this for you and then I'm going to describe what you're actually going to see happen when we fire this thing up and run it through its paces uh, it's a um, it's a de delayed chemical reaction actually and so it, it takes oh maybe a minute or two to kick in and I've got a clock here that I'm going to put into the video so that uh, as a point of reference in case I need to speed this up because sometimes it takes 15-20 minutes for it to reach its maximum goal what we're going to do is we're going to drive this machine up to a certain voltage I'll, I'll go over that in just a second so uh, beginning what we've got is again we've just we've got this motor and we've got the three phase we have two AGM batteries here uh, two Ultra, ultra capacitor modules here and here. There's 350 farads in each one of these six sections of each one of the modules. And I've got a uh, pulse width modulator circuit, just simple little circuit that just keeps this within its range. It's a 12 volt motor, DC. And I've got uh, uh, three bridge rectifiers that convert the AC off the, off the three phase back into DC that feeds back into the system. Okay, so uh, the way this is connected is this battery is labeled battery A. I don't know if you can if you can read that, but anyway, this is labeled A, and this is cap module A. The two are in parallel. This is this is labeled battery B, and the cap module in the back. Let me see if that's in the frame. I pull it over just a little bit for you. Okay. So. So cap module B is in parallel with battery B. All right, then these two batteries are connected in series. There's a little jumper wire here. You might not be able to see it. And these two cap modules are also connected in series. So this entire unit acts as, as well, it acts as one unit because it's series parallel connected. But whatever the voltage is in this battery, it's going to be almost identical in this battery and almost identical in this cap and almost identical in this cap module. So it's, it's, it's going to be a unit. It's just going to act as that. So whatever the charge is, what you see right here, 2635, uh, that represents everything in series. And um, what we're going to do, uh, well, basically that would be 13 point... Uh, uh, one six or or one seven volts per battery, which is fine. That's that's a typical standing vo uh, voltage for these AGM batteries. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to drive these up to twenty nine 
14.6 and that'll be roughly when they settle down that'll bring these batteries to 14.8 which is a good top side for AGM batteries. You can push them beyond that but you don't want to do it very often. I mean you I, I have but and it hasn't hurt the batteries at all. They just do a little off gassing you can hear it and then just you know it's but it doesn't really hurt the battery. But 14.8 is real good so 29.6 is what we want to try to bring this up to. But let me list just a few things that, that are interesting that we have to overcome. Let's talk about the friction. Let's talk about what has got to be overcome in order to see any kind of an increase here because that would just be amazing if we could. So number one you've got this motor. Now this is a this is actually a gear motor. The back section here is the motor. It's a brushed motor. Here's one of the brushes and the other down here. And so you've got heat, you've got friction. Uh, up ahead of that uh, is the gearhead section. So lots of friction there too. So you know this is a real power consumer here. Uh, inside we've got uh, the front bearing, the front main bearing with friction and then back here the rear bearing with also with friction and um, let's see aside from that we've got plenty of, of, of lens law counter torque going on in the three phase axial flux alternator so you've got that to consider then there may be some losses in wiring and there's, uh, there's three uh, transistors on this this little circuit board that controls the the motor so you may have a little bit of loss there so we've got to overcome all that loss and uh, <laughs> that's a lot that's quite a bit of loss and on top of that when this reaction kicks in I'm gonna start just a second here when the reaction kicks in and you see this change at first what you're gonna see is you're gonna see this as a consumer everything here is going to be a consumer and this voltage is going to drop it's going to drop drop and drop and then it'll stabilize at a voltage and then it'll start to rise and rise and rise okay the 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 key to this now I want you I want you to really remember this this is the the important most important part the key to this is the uh, series parallel connection of this and then there's a series parallel connection that's coming off of the three phase another very important aspect. This battery typically is going to run this motor, drive the system, the three phase is going to kick back one phase directly to battery A and two phases in series to both battery A and B and of course the ultra caps at the same time. So you've got a real strange configuration of series parallel going on here but because they're all in series they're all going to equalize out and, and it's interesting how it does it because these are chemically reactive so there's a, a chemical action that's going on in the batteries and an electrostatic uh, action that's going on inside of these ultra caps so the combination of the two doing that is is part of what makes this uh, work so well so that's the setup remember what I just told you um, go back and listen to it again if you if you missed it so what we're going to do aside from all those losses that we're going to have in the motor and the bearings and the three phase uh, I'm also going to when the reaction kicks in I'm also going to turn on this fan and there's four lights on it and just so that we can throw away even more power so I want you to see that you know we're really consuming and we're actually throwing some power away now granted this doesn't consume a lot of energy but but it does consume sun so we want to just throw that away and see if that will uh, keep us going on the right track here so let's see I think that's pretty much that's pretty much it now this is not a kit I want to point that out it's not a kit it's just a demonstrator of the one little aspect of the G1 that that's all it is I mean all we're all we're doing is just taking this section here and and demonstrating what it can do as as just a uh, like I said a, a side effect that I considered it that uh, and uh, isolated it and put it into this particular box now now the parts that you see like I said it's not a kit it's not one of our kits just a demonstration of, of the G1 or just that little aspect of the G1 so the the plastic parts the hardware and the and the three phase are all quantum magnetics products the rest of everything you see here is off the shelf so th this is not hard to replicate I mean look there's only a few parts 
but being mostly off the shelf, it's, it's going to be uh, pretty easy for, for someone to replicate if they're so inclined. So, um, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to, I've got this set to draw about one and a half amps or 1.4, somewhere around there, uh, for this motor, because like I said, it's a, it's a real consumer. So that's, you know, at 12 volts. So we're talking about that and the friction and, and the, uh, the counter torque of the three phase. So there, again, there's a lot to overcome. And uh, so we'll see what the time frame is. Keep an eye on the clock. Keep an eye on what's going on here. And, and uh, finally, finally, the other thing is this device and the other devices that I've shown that, that, that do the same thing, you know, especially from the, from the G1. Uh, all these devices I, I, I design kind of in my head and then I just build the machine. I come back later and do schematics. Um, illustrations, manuals if they're needed, if it's a kit, assembly manuals. That, I don't have anything like that for this machine because again this is just a demonstration of one aspect of the G1. So let's get it started and, and watch the clock and watch the definitely watch the meter and let's get going. This switch is for the motor. That switch is for the three phase. You could hear it when it kicked in. You can see it's pulling about uh, 1.5 or less amps, right around, right, right around 1.5 amps, 12 volts. Now you can see this consuming. It's going to drop for a little bit. Twenty six ten. So we're still a little bit above thirteen volts per battery and, and cap module. Okay. Now we hit the point where it wants to turn around. See it didn't take long at all. It depends on how you've been using the uh, the batteries and and whether the chemistry is has been activated within the last month or within the last few days so that time will will vary they like the the, the batteries and the capacitors both they like to be exercised okay They're sort of like uh, sort of like us they want to be exercised to, to do their thing now you see the voltage rising again that's that rise is across the batteries and the caps because they're all acting as one unit. Twenty six point, let's say we started at twenty six point three five. I'm going to write that down. Okay, I think that's pretty much where we were when we started, 26.35 volts. And so now we've gone beyond that and we're on the way up. So let's throw away some extra power. There goes the fan and the lights. Oh, it's out of the frame, but there's two more lights on the top of the fan too. Now, I don't know if you can see in the video, but the current is already has already come down to uh, let's see, it looks like the 1.1.3 1 or 1.4 amps from where it started, 1.5. As this rises and the resistance uh, is less, you're you're going to see it drop a little bit more.
get the frame a little bit more. Now anybody that's worked with ultra caps knows that unless you've got a lot of current coming into them, they're they're going to charge slowly because 350 farads on on each of these capacitors inside is is quite a bit of storage. But so they again they are increasing while the batteries are at the same time simultaneously. And we're already over 27 volts. Okay, we've uh, reached 2735, and remember, we started here at 2635, so we're exactly one bolt over across the uh, source unit. And there we are. I'm going to shut it off now. Now you're going to see the battery chemistry kind of try to stabilize and it actually continues to rise as it as it works especially from battery B. So they're going to stabilize, let the series connection do its thing. It'll come up but then it'll drop back a little bit. But uh, it's interesting because this process is kind of a use it or lose it type of process. These batteries don't want to have uh, a standing voltage of any more than, you know, 13.1 or 13.2 volts. So what they're going to do with this 14.8, 
uh, is uh, or more they're they're actually going to dissipate that over time say 24 to 36 hours you're gonna see all this just dissipate especially out of the caps going back into the batteries and, and the risen voltage in the batteries all gonna come back down to exactly where you started or maybe just a little bit more so like I said it's sort of a use it or lose it so we need to figure out how to best utilize this uh, this overage that you have now in the batteries and the caps and um, and that's uh, that's what kind of what's on my mind right now so you know and also if you noticed uh, this didn't just creep up in a matter of of hours but instead it it rose steadily in a matter of minutes uh, take a look at the clock or, or replay or look at the time on the video here so this is this is a uh, this is interesting so if um, if anyone has any more insight as to how this effect takes place please feel free to comment so everyone else can consider it and uh, and I think this ought to be replicated by other people so so uh, you know let's let's uh, let's take a look at this maybe a little bit more in depth I'm gonna write down the voltage here at 2964 so that you can see again that we went from 26.35 to 2964 and you can see it's gonna drop a little bit you know steadily and it will over time but it'll it'll get to a point and it'll sort of just stay there and stabilize you can use that power now what are you gonna do with that extra power so um, you know what uh, there there may there may actually there may actually be more to this than than I've given credit uh, let's find out oh hi face behind the camera <laughs> thank you